I'm Vincent McCorry. This is Africa 54. We begin our broadcast this evening with the state funeral of George Herbert Walker Bush, the 41st president of the United States. In decades, President Bush would frequently ask, nearly daily, you are looking at live pictures of the Washington National Cathedral in the U.S. Capitol where five living American presidents have come together Wednesday, the National Day of Mourning, to pay final tribute to George H. W. Bush, who died last, uh, last Friday at the age of 94. Former President Jimmy Carter, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama have joined current U.S. President Donald Trump for Bush's funeral services, where George W. Bush, the late president's son and the 43rd president, would deliver the eulogy. Thousands of people paid their final respects to former President Bush at the U.S. Capitol Rotunda over the past two days. After the funeral, former President Bush's casket will be flown back to Houston, Texas for a second and final service on Thursday. He will be laid to rest at his presidential library and museum at the Texas A&M University in nearby College Station next to his wife of 73 years, Barbara, who died in April, and their daughter, Robin, who died of leukemia in 1953 when she was only three years old. Now, the body of former U.S. President George H. W. Bush returns to Texas for burial. After Wednesday's state funeral, thousands of visitors paid their respect to the 41st U.S. president while his body was lying in state at the U.S. Capitol from Monday evening until Wednesday morning. Viewers like it's a hoax reports, dignitaries and the general public mingled in the Capitol's rotunda as they parted with the commander-in-chief. Before the state funeral at Washington's National Cathedral Wednesday, the body of President George H. W. Bush was lying in state at the U.S. Capitol. Visitors lined up to pay their last respects to the former U.S. leader, generally considered quiet and kind, but also strong and courageous. Among them was a fellow Texan who spoke to VOA Turkish service. Well, I'm from Texas, and he uh, obviously is from Texas as well. Uh, certainly well respected and um, uh, did a lot of good things over the years. A visitor from Chicago, Illinois, notes the press was not kind to the 41st president when he was in office. We missed the guy. He, he uh, a form of civility and uh, even though the press is talking about, oh, he's great, he's great, not when he was president. Oh, they went after him big time. A visitor from the northeastern U.S. state of Maine is a retired serviceman. For one thing, he's a uh, war hero, a great president, and I served under his administration and his sons. So it's very meaningful for me to be here. A visitor from Maryland says he was in high school when Bush was president. Bush was more, I guess, one of the last of the more moderate Republican presidents. Thousands of people have passed through the Capitol's rotunda since Monday. Among them are politicians and fellow war heroes, such as former U.S. Senator Bob Dole, who was helped out of his wheelchair Tuesday to pay tribute to his former rival in the race for the Republican presidential nomination. Bush's service dog Sally also was brought Tuesday to say goodbye to the former president. U.S. President Donald Trump and First Lady Melania paid their respects to Bush at the Capitol Monday evening. Zlarica Hoke, VOA News, Washington. Now for more on the life and legacy of George H.W. Bush, I'm joined by VOA White House correspondent Patsy Widakuswara and VOA Pentagon correspondent Carla Bam. Patsy and Carla, welcome to Thank both you. of you. Now let's start with uh, what's going on today. Mm -hmm. We witness... Uh, an, a momentous uh, event there. The, all the presidents, uh, okay. living presidents, are sitting together on the same row. Yes. Tell us uh, what that kind of what that image kind of means to this nation. A funeral is certainly, even though it's a sad occasion, it's certainly something that brings people together. And in particular, everyone is looking at all the presidents: Jimmy Carter, uh, Barack Obama, Bush uh, Jr., and also President Clinton, and of course President Trump. Everybody's looking at their body language. Everybody's watching their every move, in particular President Trump, because as we know, he had a very acrimonious relationship with the Bush family, starting from the GOP 2016 primary, where he competed against Jeb Bush in a very bitter and angry rivalry, where he called Jeb Bush low energy, if you remember that. Yeah, yeah. And of course, he also um, um, mocked and criticized not only President 
Bush Sr.'s 9-11 policies, policies after 9-11, but also Bush Sr.'s policies. So there's not a whole lot of love between the yeah. Bush family and uh, President Trump, but I think for this particular event, everybody is saying, let's put that all aside for now. Let's put politics, take politics out of this. Let's focus on the man and, this, and his legacy. So I think what we're seeing right now is a demonstration of, of that both from the Bush family and also from the White House. Sure. And, and Carla, uh, you're from, you cover uh, the Pentagon, and we know that he was an aviator, George yes. H.W. Uh, Bush. How is he remembered in, around the corridors of the Pentagon? There's a very long history uh, of the military with, with Bush Sr., and uh, the Secretary of Defense came out and said that he definitely proved his worth when he started out. He enlisted in the Navy at 18 years old on his birthday and he signed up. It was during World War II and he was one of the youngest naval aviators in World War II. He ended up fighting in one of the biggest air wars of the war, the Battle of the Philippine Sea. Then he went on, his plane was shot down. As the flames were surrounding him, his engine was on fire, he still managed to drop bombs and keep it cool, get out to sea, and then he was able to eject and evacuate and was picked up hours later by a submarine. So he has that history for sure. And in fact, there's a little nod to that naval aviation today. He's going to be wearing, uh, he's being buried in socks that have a naval squadron on them. Oh, he's a big right. socks guy, right? He has a sock for every occasion. For yeah. colorful yeah. socks. Yeah. yeah, and it was funny because people called him kind of a boring president. I remember yeah. the Saturday Night Live mm -hmm. skits kind yeah. of mocking how he would drone on sometimes. Yeah. and. Clearly, he proved after his presidency yeah. that he was anything but boring with the, his choice and of socks the and, and way before was. the hipsters did. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> now, there's something else about him. Uh, it looks like there's a lot being said today about how great of a person he was, his, his character, his, uh, uh, the way he treated people. Now, was that all lost somewhere in the politics of the day, or is it that uh, just history had done him an injustice for having been a one-term president? I think everybody recognizes George H.W. as a moderate. I mean, he campaigned as a hardliner, but he governed as a moderate. One of his signi signature domestic policy was the um, uh, American Disabilities Act, which, you know, the conservatives were against at that point. So he did uh, signify or symbolize an era of bipartisanship. Uh, perhaps that is no longer the case now, especially with the polarization and vitriol that's currently going on in Washington, D.C. But I think the Bush family really wanted to just rem remember that and bring everybody together on that. And one more thing that I'd like to highlight is when we're looking at all those presidents together, we see President Donald Trump is somewhat the odd man out because all these past presidents, whether they are Republican or Democrats, they symbolize certain American values, American global leadership, American um, embracement of multilateralism. Donald Trump has clearly said that he is a nationalist. He is all about America first. So again, this is a very interesting dynamic that we're looking at while these men are paying the last respects to the and 41st kind of went president. Against, uh, what all this, whether Republicans or Democrats kind of stood for over all these years, Carla? And speaking of that global leadership, yeah. um, I cover the Pentagon. There, were, there was the Gulf War that President George H.W. Bush is known for, and he made the decision going in to Kuwait. He only had a, a ground operation. The air operation lasted for weeks, but the ground operation was less than five days, only about four days. And people criticized him and said, why didn't you go ahead and take Baghdad? And why didn't you change the power in Iraq? And he said, the United States would be stuck governing Iraq, something that his son mm -hmm. later had to deal with when he was dealing with the Iraq situation and had an Iraq war of his own. But one thing that people don't even realize is his influence and his impact on the continent of Africa. A lot of people, when they think of Somalia, they think of Black Hawk Down, they think mm -hmm. of President Clinton, yeah. because that was when the troops came out. Yeah. But the troops actually went in, starting with George H.W. Bush. He wanted a humanitarian uh, assistance operation to allow that assistance to get in and to protect the people trying to, to bring that aid in. And the UN Secretary General at the time said that his impact and his influence by by starting that operation saved about a hundred thousand lives yeah. in Somalia because they were able to secure that aid. So yeah, don't forget his huge grace impact. at shepherding the end of the Cold War. I yeah. think a lot I, of people I, have been actually. I wanted to that. talk about that. He was president the dying days of the Cold mm -hmm. War, but he is a person who had had experience years before, decades before. How was that 
uh, a, a kind of a, a, be, a kind of a beneficiary to him that experience as a CIA guy, a person who has been in had been in Washington for many years. Certainly, I mean, this did not happen. The 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 Cold War, the height of the Cold War, happened under Reagan, in which he was vice president, of mm -hmm. course. But at the end of it, at the fall of the Berlin Wall, a lot of historians are saying, you know, it was his character, it was the way he carried himself in being able to hold it together and not rub it in, into the Soviet Union and just being able to wind down an empire, help wind down an empire and uh, make it as great as so possible. A, it was stubborn on holding on to a certain position, but he was a very decent person. They say it was very courteous and decent. Yes, I mean, we <laughs> must not forget the fact also that he did run a lot of uh, campaigns that were acrimonious. We yeah. remember his Willie Horton campaign that uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, stoking racial yeah. tensions in order to motivate white voters. That continues yeah. to this day. So again, like any other president, his legacy, I think, is complicated. He's just a human being. But, uh, of course, a remarkable person. I want to thank you very much, thank both you. of you, for joining us today. Well, uh, that's um, our great our thanks and appreciation to uh, their insights. Uh, Patsy Wida Kuswara, uh, VOA White House correspondent in Calabab, VOA Pentagon correspondent.